She was asking for it. She was dying for it. What? Ah, she got raped because of what she was wearing. A woman's body is her own. What she decides to wear is also her choice. She can be what? She can be sitting naked next to you and you can still not violate it. In fact, there's a research that was published by Abigail Moore in the Journal of International Women's Studies on gender gaps between the understanding of revealing clothing that women wear as, uh, and how that is perceived by men vis-a-vis -vis how that's perceived by women. And women actually said that the reason why they wear the kind of clothes they wear, it is because to feel attractive, it is for themselves. Whereas when men were asked, they said in this very research, that they thought that women were dressing up or wearing certain kinds of clothes just because um, they wanted to seduce these men. Rapists coming forward um, and sexual abusers coming forward and saying, she invited me over. Well, just because a girl or a woman invites you over, that doesn't mean that she's gonna sleep with you. According to section 375 of the Indian Penal Code, intercourse that is against a woman's will and consent is considered rape. If a woman wants to sleep with you, she will expressly let you know. Then we have this another myth, which is about, oh, she was drunk. Well, just because she was drunk doesn't mean that you can rape her or violate her body. Intoxication does not mean a woman's tacit approval to have sex with you. Sharab yahan par ek kharab character ki nishani mana jata hai. Ladkiyon ke liye. A lot of guys would come forward and say, well, I paid for dinner, so obviously she was supposed to have sex with me, or she was supposed to hook up with me, or make up with me. Just because you're being nice to her, just because you're being chivalrous to her, doesn't mean that you've bought her body, and that she's gonna have sex with uh, you. If you're paying for her dinner, you're not really being nice. You're really just manipulating her into getting to do things for you that you actually want. And I don't think that any man should be pressured into um, paying for a woman. But if you're paying for somebody just to have sex with them, that's, that's no excuse to rape a woman. This one, I don't even need to explain more. Men make mistakes. So what? <laughs> There's a belief um, that women in marriages don't get raped. And marital rape is an actual thing. In India, marital rape is not criminalized. It is only um, criminalized if the wife is between the age of 15 to 18. And that was also, uh, that also happened through the um, Supreme Court's judgment in the case of Independent Thought versus Union of India. A lot of women, a lot of domestic survivors, uh, violence survivors, when they come forward with their stories, they often reveal that men use coercive sex as a way to exert their power and dominance um, on their submissive partners and to basically let the women know that she is his property. Then another one um, is that people feel that prostitutes cannot be raped. Yes, they can be raped. Um, just because you're paying them for one sexual act doesn't mean that they've consented for all sexual acts. The kind of violence that prostitutes have to go through, whether they are um, on the street prostitute or whether they're escorts, is massive. Another one, which I, which is something I'm sure every woman who is watching this video must have gone through. Um, the concept of slut shaming. Well, she has slept with so many guys, obviously, like this had to happen with her. Well, just because you're sexually liberated doesn't mean that you deserve to be raped or you deserve to be, um, to be subjected to sexual violence. This is a, a very weird form of male sexual entitlement. Um, this, this shows the ugly face of misogyny. It's literally the same um behavior for which a man is going to be commended like he would be called a player and a woman would be looked down upon and everybody is going to think she's so easy or she's a slut or you know she's going to sleep with anybody just because she's sexually liberated so your sexual liberation has nothing to do 
with you giving out signals that you want to have sex or uninvited sex with just anybody out there. Another one is that, well, if she really was raped, she should have reported it. Well, social stigma, PTSD, lack of understanding as to what one has really gone through and a plethora of other reasons can discourage a woman to basically share her survivor's story. So you have to stop discrediting her just because she did not come um, before or she did not show up at the time when you expected her to show up with um, her survivor story. Like only about a third of rape cases get reported to the police and they lead to conviction. At the end of two 2017, the most recent year for which the data is available, Indian courts had a backlog of one lakh rape cases. And then there are women who are raped and do not report it to the police. So according to the National Family Health Survey, 80% of women who have experienced sexual violence actually don't tell anybody about it. So for you to say that just because she didn't report she wasn't raped, actually there are a plethora of reasons why she might not be reporting. And one of the reasons can be your judgments. Just like every other myth is one of the most bizarre myths is discounting men to be men. Men will be men, she should have known better. No, she should not have known better. She knows as much as she is supposed to know. Um, you cannot keep discounting men's behaviors and keep putting the responsibility of the society on women. If you can't see sexism and inequality in this statement, you really need to reflect on the patriarchy that you've internalized through the years and what is it that you can do about it.